other meeting by the state. I'm here to watch this announcement before we get started and today is worth serving. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Today is the deadline for all Bethany seniors to submit their application for scholarship consideration. The application is available on the church website and our Facebook page. Today is also the deadline to submit your student information for the June 25th Student Education Program. An application form is posted to the RUD student website. Christian County leaders will caucus in person on June 28th at 7 p.m. at the St. Paul Methodist Church, located at 1400 G Street, District, Virginia, 22191. The purpose is to vote on board's extension county issue agenda, plan for fall action, and learn about opportunities to lead. Have discussion with your question one person Many congregational care teams will identify the event. Worship on Wednesday, May 12th, this will not be held in June. We will be honoring Reverend Michael L. Sutton on Sunday, July 24th at 10 a.m. for five years as pastor of the Liberty Baptist Church. Table will be in the foyer to accept all gifts and monetary donations to the Chapter 7. And as always, Liberty Union, please join us every Monday at 7 a.m. for the 7-7 prayer call. Well as Bible study every Wednesday at 12 p.m. and Sunday school every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Okay, Liberty Union, it looks like we'll begin shortly. Thank you for your time and enjoy the service. Never mind. I just had that one day. Welcome to the welcome the worship experience of the Little Union Baptist Church. Amen. We're glad that you're able to join us on this morning. Today, we're celebrating fathers all over the world. Amen. Thank God for fathers. Amen. Listen, mothers couldn't do it all by themselves. You and I wouldn't be here without fathers. Amen. They played a role in this thing as well amen and so we give god praise for all fathers amen and so we're going to ask that we all stand on this morning 
Amen. And let's give God praise. Amen. For another day that he has made. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and I shall be glad in it. Amen. Thanking God for another day that he has blessed us. Amen. And we give God praise for that on this morning. We're going to ask, amen, this morning, amen, that our deacon will come, amen, and give us our invocation. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Eternal God, our Father, the Bible declares that if we ask in Jesus' name, yes. and he is in us, and we in him, it will be it shall be rendered unto us. Today I ask in Jesus' name that the Lord God fortify the hearts and soul of man so that he may know and realize day to day that all the investment he put into his children matters. All the investment he put into his children matters. So does <coughs> how he behaves and how he treats the fatherless matters. I pray that God continue to bless us on this wonderful day and we honor from which those blessings came. In Jesus' name, this is my prayer. Amen. praise team as they give us our hymn for the morning. Amen. In the glory. Thank you. 
thank God, amen, for those, the triune God. They are three distinct persons, but work together as one. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit never disagrees. The triune God never have arguments. The triune God never, uh, uh, Jesus never says, well, well, God, I want to do it this way. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be grand that when the church will come together, we can all come into agreement and be one as the triune God is one. Amen. Amen. I want to say thank you to all of those, amen, who supported in the home going, amen, of our dear brother, Amen. The late Claude C. Thomas. Amen. Thank God for all of you who worked behind the scenes to our chairman of the deacon board, to our chairman of the trustee board. Amen. To our ushers. Thank you all so very much. Amen. Uh, also, I want to thank, amen, Brother Curtis Porter, who was working that parking lot. Amen. On yesterday. Thank God. Amen. For him as well. Thank God for all of you. Amen. Who prayed. Amen. For the Thomas family. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. And we give God praise. Amen. Uh, for you, you, and even you. Amen. Also, uh, I want to say that on uh, Tuesday, that on Tuesday, amen, um, um, Sister Jackie Banks and, and uh, 
Deaconess Jackie Banks and her family will be celebrating the home going of their mother, amen, Sister Polly Ann Dennis, amen, on Tuesday, and I believe it starts at 10 o'clock. Is that correct? The viewing is at 10, service at 11. The, 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 viewing, is the viewing is at 10, service starts and the service is at 11. Amen. Thank you so much. And so um, we will, uh, the van will be um, available. Amen. And so uh, we have a limited number of seats. Amen. I believe, how many do we have? Where's, uh, I believe he said 14, I believe. Okay. Uh, we're going to stick with, is it 14? Yes. Okay. Thank you. 14. Amen. And so uh, become, if we be, uh, you can ride on a first come, first serve basis. And so we're going to ask you, amen, to contact, amen, trustee Sharon Turner. Amen. If you so desire, amen, to ride on the van, amen, we will leave here at the church at 9 o'clock, amen, on Tuesday morning. Amen. And continue to pray, amen, for Sister Jackie Banks, who, amen, has not missed a service. Let me tell you, she has been, her and her husband has been supportive of everybody of everybody amen and and i believe the least that we could do amen is to show our support amen for her amen in her time of bereavement amen amen we love you sister jackie amen we love you amen and may god continue to bless you amen amen also my brother and sister don't forget that uh the memorial uh service uh for brother uh, can we put his picture up? Do we have that? Sister Mervyn. There we go. Thank you. Um, the uh, kind of like visual. Um, amen for Sister Mervyn's son, uh, whose name is Devin. Amen. Alexander Brewer. Amen. Uh, as you all know, he um, tragically died. Amen. Through drowning uh, in California. And so... Um, but we thank God that God is blessing, amen, the Mervyn family and, and upholding them and keeping him, keeping them with his love, amen. And so there'll be a candlelight vigil on Friday, uh, June the 24th, amen, uh, from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Potomac Senior High School uh, in Dumfries, Virginia, amen. Uh, and it says it'll be in the track and field area. And then also, uh, the homegoing service, or should we say memorial service, will be held here on Saturday, uh, uh, July the 25th at 11 o'clock. Amen. amen. And so let's support, amen, this family also in their bereavement. Amen. amen. And amen. Uh, listen, as we uh, said on uh, last week, listen, uh, there was a time that we, would, that we could state that uh, you were here today and you are gone tomorrow. But we know in this time and in this season, amen, in which we live, uh, uh, amen, we can also say that you're here today and you can be gone today. Amen. And so it behooves all of us, amen, uh, to get ready. And if you are ready, it will behoove you to stay ready. Don't let the Lord catch you with your work undone. Work while it's day because the nighttime will come wherein no man can work. Amen? Amen. amen. At this time, we're going to ask uh, that the family, amen, uh, we're going to get ready to move into our baby dedication on today. Amen. And we're going to ask, amen, the family, if you would put that, there we go, um, the family of Nassim Amir Gordon Gibson. Amen. Uh, we will ask that the family will come forward uh, on today. Amen. We will dedicate, amen, this young man. We're going to ask that uh, if, um, if uh, his, his mother, uh, Sister Tashima Gordon, uh, the grandparents, Michael and Chanel Gordon, amen, um, the godparents, amen, Kenny and Monique McCoy, uh, Kiana uh, Andrus, Stephen Crosby, Virginia uh, uh, Minister Reverend, Virginia Richborough, amen, and also uh, the Reverend James and Deborah Fuller, 
going to ask all of you to come forward. Amen. At this time. Amen. We need more time. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We need more time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what we we'll do. I tell you what we we'll do. Just un until they get ready. Amen. Uh, we will move into Amen. Our right hand of fellowship. Amen. And so we're going to ask Brother Scotty Fuller. Amen. Um, we're going to ask. Uh, Brother Robert Burton, amen, and Brother Reuben Taylor, if they would all come at this time. Let's give them a hand as they come. Yeah, if you would come and face the congregation, amen. These gentlemen, amen, joined the church, amen, when um, our sanctuary was closed, and so we are finally able to officially give them, amen, the right hand of fellowship on today. Isn't it wonderful that they're all men on Father's Day? Amen. How ironic. Amen. That they are uh, officially getting the right hand of fellowship, amen, on Father's Day on today. And gentlemen, we just want to say to you that we're so happy, amen, that you cast your lot here uh, at the Little Union Baptist Church, amen, and um, you, you have already received all benefits and rights of members of this church, but we're just truly making it official on today. And so for that reason, uh, on today, uh, we have modified our right hand of fellowship. We're just asking that the preachers and uh, our deacons will come and give them uh, the right hand of fellowship to reduce uh, movement as much as possible. Amen. So let us sing. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. Leaning. Amen. On the everlasting arm. What a fellowship. Tell me what, what have I to dread? What have I to feel in that on the everlasting arm? I have blessed peace with my Lord so nearly in that on the everlasting arm. We are leaning, we are leaning, well safe and secure. From all along, we are leaning, we are leaning, leaning on the everlasting arm. Amen. Let's give them one great big hand again. Amen. God bless you, gentlemen. Amen. You can return to your seats. May God bless you. May God keep you. Amen. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We know the Burton family is proud today. Amen. And good to see all of you all on today. Amen. Amen. Brother Reuben, amen, was one that uh, was a member here. Amen. And he desired to come back home. Amen. And so thank God for him. Amen. And then Brother Scotty, amen, moved from Colorado all the way to, do y'all live in Manassas? What is that considered? Manassas? Yeah, all the way to Manassas. Amen. Amen. And he desired, decided to cast his lot here uh, at the church. And so thank God, amen, for all of you. Amen. And listen, listen, there's no big eyes or little use. That's because, you know, you're the youngest members, if you will, of the church. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, you still hold the same rights and benefits as anybody else. Amen and amen. All right, y'all ready now? All right. So, with the family, amen, of Nassim 
Amir, Gordon Gibson, will they come at this time? Amen. Tashima Gordon, is Tashima here today? Okay. The grandparents, Michael and Chanel Gordon. The godparents, Kenny and Monique McCoy. Kiana Andrus, Stephen Crosby. Amen. Reverend Virginia Richborough and Reverend James and Deborah Fuller. Amen. loving care and keeping of God our Father and Christ our Savior. We now ask that God will continue to bless you and keep you as you rear this child. Mark 10, 13 through 16 says, and they brought young children to him that he should touch them and his disciples rebuked those that brought the children to them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said to them, Allow or suffer the children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. In other words, if you don't come to God as a child, if you don't humble yourself as a child, you can in no wise experience the kingdom of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Amen. To the parents, or grandparents should I say, the guardians, if you will, as you present this child for dedication to God, Will you rededicate yourselves, amen, to the maintenance of a Christian home where Christ shall be honored and the word of God will be held in high esteem so that this young man may be on his, on his own free choice, confess his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and upon coming of age accept Jesus Christ as his personal savior. If you will do that, please say, we do. I didn't hear y'all. All right. To the godparents, if anything should happen to these parents, do you promise to accept the responsibilities that these guardians have so promised? If you agree to that, please say, we do. Amen. Amen. Then to the church, as members of this church and the family of Jesus Christ, do you promise to pray for this child that he may be led in his personal accountability to hate that which is evil and to cling that which is good? If you agree to this church, please say, we do. we do. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask the aunt of Brother Gordon, amen, to pray the dedication prayer of this child at this time. Reverend Richburg. Oh, grace and eternal Father God, we, your sons and daughters in tradition, of our ancestors in the faith, bring Nassim Amir Gordon Gibson to you, that Jesus might bless him, that Jesus might touch his life with his grace, mercy, love, and other 
ever-flowing, overflowing favor that Jesus might order his steps, direct his feet, touch and anoint his heart, mind and spirit. God, bless this baby. We thank you for allowing us to partner with you in the nurture and love of Nassim and every child you send into this household of faith called Little Union Baptist Church. For this blessing, for we know you are the God who hears and answers prayer. We thank you with joy, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We thank you with praise, because the praises of the Lord are worthy to be sounded. We thank you with everything that's in us, in the blessed, almighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I present to everyone, and Brother Mike is, is sweating. <laughs> I present, amen. If you all would turn around toward the congregation, I present, amen, Brother Nassim Amir Gordon Gibson. Let's give them a great big hand. Amen. 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 May God bless you. God keep you. Amen. We love you in Jesus' name. You can return to your seats. Amen. And as they return to their seats, let's keep Nassim's mother in prayer. Amen. Let's keep Tashima in prayer. Let's keep the Father in prayer. Amen. Let's keep them in our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. My brothers and sisters, if you would, get your Bibles out. Amen. And turn with us. Amen to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs, amen, chapter 3, verses 3, I'm sorry, verses 1 through 6. Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Amen. And it says, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For a length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Y'all know this one. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen. The word of God for the people of God, to the glory of God, thanks be unto God. Today, we want to speak from the subject, daddy duties. Daddy's duties. Amen. The praise team will give us a Samana selection, then we'll come back with the word of the Lord. Amen.
stretch my hand to but I'm glad. Amen. I'm glad that Pamela Sessoms is here today. Just a few days ago this past week, she was admitted to the hospital, but she's here with us today. And we give God praise. Sometimes you don't think about the what if. chance to think about what if not only did I had a chance to think about that but I had to think about you all as well members of Little Union and those who are suffering those who have experienced death in their family also had to deal with family issues as well. Sometimes I, it's some church today, this morning as I was watching and listening, they sung the song, For He Knows, Yes He Knows, Just How Much You Can Bear. Though the load gets heavy, he never left me alone to bear it all. Just ask for strength and keep on toiling. Hallelujah. Yes, sister, he's faithful. Hallelujah. And so because of God, I can, we all can take our licking and keep on ticking. Because of the Spirit of God, amen, amen. We can be knocked down, but won't be knocked out. Come what will or may from day to day. He knows. Yes, he knows. Just how much we can bear. Amen. Daddy duties. I've been sharing with folk all week long about how I get excited about Father's Day. Amen. I be trying to encourage my family that we ought to be celebrating Father's Day month or at least Father's Day week. Sister, I'll take a month first before we go with a year. Amen. I ain't going to ask, you know, crawl before we walk. Amen. <laughs> and I say this with full awareness that Father's Day, watch this, brothers, gets cheated compared to Mother's Day. 
I feel some kind of way about that. But the truth be told, not, 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 not half as much money is spent on Father's Day as it is on Mother's Day. Hallmark sells more cars on, watch this, St. Patrick's Day than on Father's Day. As a matter of fact, Father's Day is always teamed up with graduation recognitions. Y'all know I'm right. We don't even get our own aisle on the card section. It's mixed with graduation cards. Amen. Father's Day gets cheated. You can go to brunch today without even making reservations because guess what? They got room at the table. I called up the log cabin down in Stafford on, on Friday and they told me they had plenty of seats for Father's Day. Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, they're sold out early. Amen. For a lot of fathers, they don't get to sit down and enjoy a meal that is prepared for them, but many of them have to go home, fire up the grill, enjoy their own meal on Father's Day. The reason why I get excited about Father's Day is not about what I get, but it reminds me of what I have been given. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone uh, in this because all of us who are fathers have been given some of the greatest gifts from the Lord, and that's the ability to raise a child. I want you to know that uh, nothing in the world brings me half as much joy when I look in the eyes of my two children and they call me dad. I take great joy. And being a father, being a father has changed my life in ways that uh, uh, nothing else uh, uh, ever can or could do in my life. And let me say this, and, and there ought to be a couple of amens from other fathers, amen, that being a father will make you a better man. When you are connected and committed and involved in the lives of your children, you can't help but be a better man. I don't believe in gender stereotypes that men and women can't do the same thing, but I would argue with you that mothering is slightly different from fathering. Not that it is any easier, amen, uh, 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 there's an easier connection between a mother and a child because the relationship is formed where? In the womb of the mother, am I right? Love and reciprocity develop so much so that when children are born, they instinctively cling to their mother. And even as they grow older in life, they are defensive about our mothers. Amen. When I was raised, amen, uh, we played the dozens, and, and guess what? You can talk about somebody's daddy all you want it. Your daddy is so ugly. Your daddy is so fat. Your daddy is so mean. Amen. You can say all of that and nobody would get offended. But oh, if you said your mama. A fight is going to start. One preacher said that he was attending his son's graduation. And while he was giving a, a, a speech, uh, uh, the son said he wanted to thank his daddy. But when it came to his mother, he said, uh, he started shedding tears because I want to thank my mama. And the daddy got jealous and said, where the tears for me? <laughs> Fathering brings a strength out of you that you're, you'll never know until you are connected to a child. It's a call to sacrifice, to give, and to be selfless, uh, knowing that uh, it is not uh, uh, reciprocated in a visible way, amen, the way a child reciprocates to his mother. Therefore, I would suggest to you that, uh, uh, that the strength is, uh, uh, is missing from a lot of men because some men have uh, the stamina, amen, to make a baby, but they do not have the stamina 
to father a child. How dare somebody want to name their son after them? And they don't accept the responsibility of being a father. Being a father, amen, takes a lot of strength. It is uh, 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 of the greatest joy of my life, but I also tell you that it is the greatest fear of my life. Nothing makes me more fearful than failing my children. When I think about the world that they are facing, how evil it is, uh, when I have to deal with the reality that black and brown boys are, 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 are biased in education and in the judicial system. When I have to face the fact that when you turn on the TV and there are school shootings and police brutality that is enacted against boys who look just like mine, when I realize that there are uh, new STDs out there in the streets, new drugs, amen, with new names that I don't even know anything about, it brings me great concern. How do I raise my children to live in a world that I never faced? What temptations, uh, 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 amen, that never came my way? And it frightens me, amen, like some other uh, parents in here, uh, uh, if you're honest. There are some moments when you really don't know what to do. All you can do is pray. Some of the greatest days of my life were when uh, I held my uh, children for the first time when they were in the nursery. And when they began to cry, amen, uh, in my arms, I was able to give them back to the nurse. Amen. But fear hit me a couple of days later when the nurse told me, amen, and you can take your child home now. Fear hit me again when it was time for them to graduate high school and they were off to college. And people told me uh, that those days, uh, 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 those years of raising your child will go mighty fast. And they did. I still wish to this day that my children were still of an age that we could go out in the backyard, amen, and play different games until we get tired. I want to play, but now my children don't really want to play. They'd rather be on their cell phones. How many know I'm telling the truth? <laughs> All of us, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, share the same fears when it comes to raising our children. We want them to be something. We want them uh, to be holy. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be happy. Amen. We want them to be able, amen, to fulfill their dreams. Sometimes we want them to live our dreams through them. We want to provide them with resources to help them fulfill their dream. We want uh, them to stand and be honorable. We want them to be faithful in their relationships. We want them to be good parents to, their, uh, uh, to our grandchildren. And we want them to be honorable men and women. We want them to uh, change the world. Amen. We want the best for our children. And that desire is not unique to us. It is a universal desire. Shared by all good parents. Solomon had this same desire for his own children. You know Solomon, don't you? Who, that's right, was the son of David and Bathsheba. And Solomon, if uh, you went to Sunday school, amen, uh, is the wisest man in the Bible. God comes to Solomon in 1 King 3 and says, Solomon, uh, uh, ask for whatever you want and I will give it to you. Can you imagine God coming to you, telling you you can have whatever you want? What would you ask God for? If I could have whatever I want, some folk wouldn't be alive right now. Oh, <laughs> pastor, you ain't saved saying that kind of stuff. But some folk can get on your last nerve. 
If I could have whatever I wanted, amen, I would be so rich that I wouldn't be here right now. But Solomon said, God, give me wisdom. Allow me to discern between right and wrong. Let me make sound judgments and choices. Lord, give me clarity to see things the way they really are. God, grant me wisdom. The Bible says that God granted him wisdom. Amen. More than anyone who ever walked on the face of the earth. And Proverbs is Solomon's uh, uh, taking pen to paper and writing down the wisdom uh, he has so that he may pass it on to his sons. Because Solomon understood that it doesn't profit me anything to be the wisest man on earth, to build a kingdom for the Lord, to have plaques all over my wall and dollars in my bank account and not pass on wisdom to my children. My brothers and sisters, what does it profit a man to climb the corporate ladder, drive a BMW, earn lots of money, and not leave a great legacy in the life of his children? I am clear that the real measure of, of my life is not found in how big this congregation is. The real measure of my life is, uh, uh, is not found or seen in what size the building of this church is. Amen. How many degrees I have or plaques I have on the wall. But the real measure of my life is seen in those two children that I have. And Solomon recognizes as fathers. We have a duty and an obligation to our children. And so he sits down and writes in Proverbs some wisdom to pass on to his children because he wants his sons to live a long life. He wants his sons to be prosperous. He wants his sons to be at peace with God and all humanity. And Solomon realizes that if we are going to help our children, amen, live that kind of life, dads, there are three things we have to tell our children. Number one. Solomon says, teach your children to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Let them know that if they are going to make it through life, amen, they are going, if, if they're going to do anything uh, worthwhile, if they're going to live at peace, if they are going to make a name for themselves, every child has to grow up to know that you can put your trust in God. Solomon is, is trying to say uh, something to us that uh, is important to us as the day uh, uh, that he wrote it. You can trust in God. That's some good advice, isn't it? That's some sound wisdom. When life happens, and it will, trust in the Lord. When the bottom of your life drops out, and it will, and it may, trust in the Lord. When the doctors say cancer, and it may. Trust in the Lord. When you don't have enough money to see you through, and you will, trust in the Lord. When somebody breaks your heart, whether it be a he or she, trust in the Lord. When you get laid off your job, and you might, trust in God. When all hell seems to break loose in your life, you can trust in God. The best advice that a father gives their children is to learn to trust in the Lord. When things happen in your life and you don't have, uh, uh, guess what? You don't have to take up uh, uh, arms and shoot somebody. You can simply trust in the Lord. When things don't go the way you want them to go, you don't have to swallow a bunch of pills nor put a rope around your neck. Just trust in the Lord. Dads, our number one duty is to teach our children to trust in the Lord. 
because it is our responsibility to get our children ready, watch this, to live outside of our homes. Amen. We can't shelter them all their lives. My number one job is to teach them how to live when they are no longer under my care. Now, mama may let them back in the house. But it's dad's job to get them ready to get out of the house. Amen. I know they'll come back, but you got to keep teaching them anyhow. To prepare them, uh, to ready themselves to be out of the house. They need to know who to call on when they are on their own. When you are in trouble, call your daddy. Ain't no wrong with that. And I'll do my best to be there. When you are uh, home and I'm not there, amen, call 911. When you are out with some friends and they are doing something that you know is not right, don't you get in the car with them. Call me or call Uber. Amen. And come on home. If you are driving and the car breaks down, amen, I tell them, call USAA, amen, roadside assistance. But I realize that uh, they will get in some situations, watch this, that Uber and USAA can't get them out of. I realize that there are some situations that roadside assistance can't help them with. They are going to face, amen, some things that daddy cannot change. Am I right about it? Hallelujah. They are going to go through some things that 911 can't solve. But I want them to know how to get down on their knees and call on the Lord and ask the Lord to deliver them. My brothers and sisters, we have failed our children, and, and, and me and Sister Jackie Banks was talking a few Sundays ago. We failed our children. You know why? Because most of us have said this, that we want to give our children some of the things that we never had. And let me tell you, we have damaged our children because now children feel entitled. They expect certain things. They don't, even, they don't even want to ask. They just know daddy going to do it. They just know mama going to do it because that's what mama supposed to do. Mama ain't got to do nothing but pay taxes and die. <laughs> and daddy. Amen. It made, uh, 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 my brothers and sisters, we have failed our children. And if we don't tell them how to call on the Lord, to trust in the Lord, and know that God will provide, we have failed them. But it made me wonder, how do you teach someone to trust in God? How do you teach a child to know that when you pray, God will answer? How do you teach them to understand that all things do work together for the good of them that love the Lord? How do you teach a child to trust in the Lord? Amen. The answer is simple. You don't tell them, but you show them. Am I right about it? See, 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 we thought, you know, our parents could threaten us to death and we would do right, wouldn't we? But we can't threaten these kids like our parents threaten us. Because they ready to suffer consequences. And then they're going to ask you why. And guess what? Our answer, that, 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 the answer that our mother and father gave us, because I said so. But these children these days, tank good enough. Tank good enough. Amen. We have to allow our children to visibly see us trusting in God. Dad. <clears throat> it is your duty to be caught praying. It is your duty for them to open the door and bust in the room and see you reading your Bible. It is your duty for them to wake up in the middle of the night and see you standing at the edge of your bed with your hands stretched out, pleading the blood of Jesus to protect your children from all hurt, harm, and danger. Children need to see that. 
amen. And they'll never forget it. Am I right about it? I used to wake my children up sometime. I'd be in the living room praying 5 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't care if I woke them up. Hopefully they come join me. Amen. But when me and Jesus get to talking, amen, the, vol the volume seems to get a little louder. I have prayed over this, and look how God answered. Uh, uh, they need to see a connection between your prayer and God's answering uh, uh, that, that requires you to testify of how the Lord answered your prayer. Train your children to trust in the Lord. Number two, in order for my children to be successful, uh, uh, I have a duty as a dad to teach my child to lean not to their own understanding. That verb lean in the Bible is the Hebrew word called shahan, S-H-A apostrophe A-N, which literally means a king who is dependent upon the wisdom of his counselors. Shahan lean, uh, there's a, there, a, a, a mean, there's a king depending on those around him to make wise decisions. Lean is about who are you trusting in and watch what Solomon says. He says, don't lean, don't trust, don't rely on your own understanding. Don't miss this. The wisest man in the Bible says it is not wise to trust in your own wisdom. What Solomon is really saying is that uh, you have to, uh, you have got to get yourself around some people, amen, you can lean on. Some people uh, that will um, help you make sound decisions. Some people uh, who will help you see things clearly. Some people who can help you make wise decisions. Leaning is about discerning who you should and should not lean on. So as a dad, one of my duties to my children uh, is, 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 is to help them to discern who they ought to allow in their intimate circle of their lives so that they would declare that that person I cannot trust. That person I cannot listen to. That person I cannot follow. But I know who I can lean on. It's about discerning who ought to be in your circle because parents, watch this, your greatest competitors are your children's friends. Dad, the greatest challenge to your influence on your child is his best friend. Mom, your greatest threat to your daughter is her BFF. Best friend forever. They hold just as much of an influence over your children as you do. Friends influence our children. Confession is good for the soul, right? But somebody said it ain't good for the reputation, for your reputation. So in high school, I did a lot of things. I tried a lot of stuff. But there were certain things I would not do. There were certain things I did not try. Why? It was because my friends that I hung around with, guess what? They didn't rob people. My friends did not smoke crack, and crack was prevalent in the early 80s and mid-80s. Amen. And it was all in our neighborhood. We saw a generation of people, amen, uh, 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 children, should I say, a generation of children go parentless because of the crack epidemic. Am I right about it? I hung around folk that did not influence me to break the law. My friends helped to determine my own behavior. My point is uh, we have a duty as parents to influence their circle of friends who they hang around with. Now, how do I keep them from the wrong circles of friends? Well, Jan Yeager, a, rela a relationship psychologist uh, who uh, 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 has a book called When Friendships Hurt, 
she was asked a question about how kids wind up with bad friends. And she said that most kids end up with delinquent, prodigal, and problematic friends is because, amen, the friends bring something to the table that is missing in the child's life at home. The friends bring affirmation. The friends bring acceptance. The friends bring pride. The friend, uh, 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 the friend, uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, friends bring, amen, love. Friends bring faithfulness and, 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 and children navigate to what, amen, friends bring and accept the bad behavior that comes with it. And the next thing you know, Bad behavior is gained because they did not find affirmation at home. They find in a sexual relationship what they did not get from their father. Daddy, that's why it's our duty to tell our daughters how pretty she is and how loved she is. Because if you don't, the wrong person will. Am I right about it? You instill in her that she is beautifully and wonderfully made. Because if you don't, the wrong person will. Am I right about it? You know, back in the day when I was being raised, we had some rules. Amen. If you went out to the store with your parents, you were told before you enter in the store, don't you touch nothing you better not embarrass me because I tear you up in the store if you went with your parents to someone else's house you already told you better not embarrass me another rule is, if, is, 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 that, is that this guess what you, look when, when, when I talk to my friends you go outside because you don't have no business getting in grown folks' conversation. Am I right? And if we get over there and they ask you if you want something to eat, you tell them, no, you're not hungry. Just fed you before you left. You're not going to embarrass me. Amen. So they would feed us before we left the house. And, and, and when we got to somebody else's house, amen, uh, 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 we weren't hungry, or at least we pretended that we weren't hungry. I was always hungry. My mom would always say, boy, you got tapeworms in you. You always hungry. Amen. It is our duty to make certain that our children, amen, is sealed with love and filled with pride and filled with affirmation before they get out of the house. Amen. Because when they get out the house and some dude call your daughter and say, what up, shawty? She will automatically say, Arr! talk to the hand, don't bother me. Because she received affirmation already at home. That, 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 guess what? You are not going to disrespect me. Am I right about it? Hallelujah. Last thing is this. Amen. Acknowledge when certain people are in the room. We did all of that. Amen. Um, I want to say this. Here's a, another thing I want you to say. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And the one thing you want to do, you want to acknowledge God's position. You want to acknowledge God's presence. And then you want to acknowledge God's provision. Let me say that again. Acknowledge God's position. He is God, right? If, 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 if you go into the courtroom, you're always in the court, when the judge comes in, he's going to tell you, not ask you to stand. They're going to say, all rise. Court is in session. The honorable such and such presiding. You acknowledge that judge's position, right? Same way we ought to honor God. 
He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is high and lifted up. We ought to honor who he is, his position. He's God, and besides him, there's no other. We ought to acknowledge his presence. Amen. That wherever I go, he's always around. I can't get so sneaky that I can get away with some stuff and God won't see it. Maybe God's too busy. He's never too busy. He sees and hears all things. And then acknowledge God's provision. If our earthly fathers can give us good things, if, our, if we are hungry, we ask our father, daddy, I'm hungry, will he give you a serpent? If you ask your daddy, daddy, uh, 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 um, I'm hungry, you ask for bread, will he give you a stone? So God said, well then, if your earthly father who might not be saved give you good things, then how much more will your heavenly father give you what you need? Amen. Is there anybody here, amen, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, got enough good sense to know that God has been good to all of us? The Lord has blessed us. So we ought to acknowledge his provision. This is, what, this is what you do. Teach them to trust in the Lord with all their heart. Teach them to lean not to their own understanding. Teach them to acknowledge God's provision, presence, and provision. And that's the duty of all of us daddies. Amen. And amen. Let us all stand. We have a duty, daddies. And then our duty is not just extended to our own children. But we have a duty to protect our children in our community and in our neighborhoods. Amen? Amen. It used to be like that one time that if somebody in the neighborhood caught you doing wrong, they get you. Wear you out, trust. tell your parents what they did to you, and then your parents will give you a whooping too. Amen. Amen. Now, don't you say nothing to my child. Don't you touch my child. Don't even look at my child wrong. Amen. Father, we thank you today for your word. Help us, God. Because there's some parents out there who are fearful of their children. Lord, have mercy. There are some children who will lock their own parents out of their own house. Lord, I pray that you would get our houses in order. That parents will be the, will be the parents and children will be children. I pray for every father today that they will accept the duty that Solomon spoke about today. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to open the doors of the church today. Amen. If you, amen. On this day, want to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Won't you open up your heart and allow Jesus to come in. Accept him as your personal savior. Forgive you of your sins. He will do just that. If you desire, amen, to give your life to Christ, you can do it right now where you are, where you sit, where you stand. If you made that decision, write us, call us, send us an email, let us know that you accepted Jesus Christ. We will contact you, amen, and we will lead you, amen, in a way to grow in the Lord. There may be someone here today that want to Amen. Reclaim, be reclaimed back to God. Maybe you don't have a church home and you want to cast your lot here at Little You. Amen. You can do that today. Won't you come? Won't you come? Will there be one? Will there be one that will give their life, rededicate their life? You're going to need him. You're going to need him. You're going to need him. Will there be one? Hallelujah. Amen. If Israel is not 
saved. Jacob will not lose his reward. Thank you, Brother Deacon. Everybody may be seated. Amen. We ask now that you will prepare yourselves at home and in here. Amen. As we move into our communion. Amen. to be served communion and have not been served, will you raise your hand? A deacon will come and serve it to you now. Is there anyone? Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? What can make me be hold again nothing but the blood of Jesus singing oh precious is that flow that makes me white as snow no other fountain no but the blood of Jesus. At this time, we're going to ask the deacon to come, amen, to pray over these elements that God will change them from tangible to supernatural. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, this we do in remembrance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your, your, only begotten Son. So we ask you, as only you can, bless the bread mm -hmm. that represent Jesus' broken body. Bless the cup that represent the blood he shed for mankind. In Jesus' name, we ask of these things. Amen. Amen. It was a dark and terrible night wherein Jesus met with his disciples for the last time in this manner. And guess what? One of them was a devil. Amen. But yet he still served him as well. On that night, he said, disciples, I won't eat with you in this manner, but the next time I do this, it would be in my father's kingdom. And he took the bread, he broke it, and he said, this bread represents my body that was broken for you. 
Eat ye all of it. Let us all eat together. My, 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 the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. And then like Mana, he took the cup. He said, this fruit of the vine represents my blood. Yes, they took a crown of thorns, shoved it in my skull. Blood came rushing down. They took spears and pierced them in my side. Blood came streaming down. They took spikes, nailed my hands and my feet. Blood came streaming down. The blood was shed for you for the remission of your sins. Take it now. Drink ye all of it. Let us all drink together. Amen, amen. With all the extras that we had this Sunday, we're still getting out on time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, don't forget, starting first Sunday in July, we will have one hour service for the rest of the summer. Amen. We're going to call it Summer Breeze. Amen. Summer Breeze. Make me feel fine. Blowing through the jasmine of my mind. Amen. And so we know that many of us can't tolerate wearing a mask but for so long. And so we're going to try, amen, to accommodate you. Amen. And so from 10 to 11. Amen. We're going to hope to say, give the benediction at 11 o'clock. Amen. Starting, amen, first Sunday in July. Amen? amen? Amen. Let us all stand. Come on, give us a little bit of that. The blood still works. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. The blood still works. Anybody believe it? The blood still the works. Blood still works. The blood still works. It will never, never do this power. God bless you. May God keep you. You're already blessed. God bless you. Go in peace. In Jesus' name. Amen.